Okay, we're recording. Okay. And uh, Corey is physically present. So we do have, um, let's see, I think four online and one in person. Hi, everybody. Can you hear them? Yes. Okay. Hi. Yes, good evening. <laughs> Okay, good evening all. Good Our evening. Council of Alachua County, November 7, 2022 meeting, call to order at 5.30 p.m. First is the call, uh, the uh, approval of the agenda. And we can't uh, do the approval of the agenda oh, or those two sets of minutes because it's a workshop. Yeah. Okay. So that would go to the May 5th, 2023 our conference discussion. Oh, no, we have the annual work plan and accomplishments. Okay. Item number two. Yeah, item number four. Yeah. four. Oh, there it was. Okay. So I did provide to everybody uh, in your packet the draft um, report. And so it just, it's very basic stuff. You know, it mentions that uh, Mr. Ruiz is our chair, that I'm your liaison. Then it talks about the responsibilities and duties of the board. Um, some of our accomplishments that we held meetings on those dates, that we completed the call to artists for the Poet Laureate, Fire Stations 33 and 40, West Lawn Sankofa, Sports Event Center, Sculpture, Mural and Silhouettes. We held our first annual artist conference. We completed art tag grant applications and awards. We reviewed Jack Durant's art loans from uh, Maggie Labarda, Corey Williams, Ann Metz, and Amy Richard. We developed an arts council logo in partnership with the county communications office. And then we also have some goals. So um, our goals are to complete the arts and economic prosperity study in partnership with Visit Gainesville, finalize the installation of the West Lawn Sanco for the Sports Event Center sculpture, mural, and silhouettes, and finalize logistics for our second annual conference. So if uh, anybody has some additions, changes, suggestions, I am open. I, I don't think we need to change anything in that report. Do we? The only thing that I was going to bring up here in just a, a couple of minutes is that uh, court services is getting a new building. And so they would like a stained glass installation as well as a mural. And so maybe whenever uh, we kind of list our uh, goals for the next year, you know, to include those CTAs, the call to artists, and then um, fire stations, and I can't remember the number of the fire stations, but there's two new ones that are gonna be coming online. So completing those call to artists as well. Okay. okay well, I guess I'm not hearing any other discussion if it's okay with everybody. I'll just make those additions and then maybe uh, next month we can we well, can officially I mean, approve it. Yes, yeah, so say we, we can't do anything now, okay. can we? No, no, just discuss it like if you had some changes or whatever, so we can get those implemented. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Um, Gina, did we ever uh, find a volunteer for uh, the law art? You know, uh, no. No. I, I, I reached out to the attorney, uh, so it was kind of a bunny trail, but I, I finally stumbled on one who is the artist that does this kind of thing, or attorney that does this kind of thing, and they have not responded to my emails or phone calls or anything. Mm. Mm. Okay. But you're going to keep trying, right? I am, yes. I, I reached out again just... A couple days ago so i do try and reach out okay all right That's, that was my only question good deal so that is important you know a lot of artists um a lot of time a lot of artists when they cross over um a lot of things is up in the air you know about their their work and and uh who inherit what, 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 what. 
Mm-hmm. As well as a lot of people would like to start a nonprofit and they don't know um, some of the, the, the legal steps that they need to take as well. So. I promise I'll keep trying. If you know of anybody though, reach out to them too, please. Okay. That was it. <laughs> okay. Well, Gina, uh, Gina, I got a quick question. Yes, sir. How, how many other counties in the state have art councils and where are we in comparison to activity with things they do? I know they probably have, I'm sure Dade County's got one and their budget is just, you know, they poop gold in their budget, but I mean, are, are we? <laughs> com, com, compared, compared to other counties, I mean, to me, it seems like we do a lot. Are, are we an active arts council? So if you uh, look up local arts agency online, all 67 counties have some entity designated. So for a long time, Alachua County had the city of Gainesville designated. However, back in uh, 2017, maybe, the board said, you know what, they're pretty city of Gainesville centric. And so what about what's going on in unincorporated Alachua County and the other eight smaller cities? So let's take it back under Alachua County. So we kind of, you know, bring some recognition to everybody in all of Alachua County. But if you look at that list, you'll see in some instances where the chamber may be the local arts agency. So it, ju it just varies by community. And I, I think we actually do a very solid job, but you know, are there other counties that do more a hundred percent definitely. And are there counties that do less a hundred percent definitely. So I, I think we hold our own. I think we're very busy. You know, it's like I look at our accomplishments. It's like, wow, we really have done a lot. Well, yeah, that's why I just, it seems like we have. And, you know, I didn't know if we are doing a lot or not. The only I thing think we do I, more. I agree. I was going to just say, you know, as far as like grants and trying to help like the artists in that kind of respect, I think we could do more. But, uh, you know, it's like we just haven't uh, been successful. We tried applying for, oh my goodness, it was some rescue plan funds for the arts community and we just were not funded, you know, so I was hoping we would be so we could like regrant to local artists because I know that COVID certainly impacted those folks too. Um, but yeah, so that's probably the thing I would think that we're lacking is like applying for grants and regranting to local artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As the LAA, there's not, there's not any kind of pot of money that exists that we're not digging into we just have that license plate tag money so we can apply for um some culture grants through the state mm -hmm. and we've tried doing that too and we just we just were not successful with it i think it's because we were just too new and we didn't have a whole lot going on and maybe we would be more successful now but at the time it just it, you know there's been some organizations that have been around for a long time and they've got a known product and that was enough <laughs> Well, I, Gina, a lot of times you can be new, but your project sounds really great on paper and, and, you, and it gets funded. Well, we need some creative writing, Dr. Queen. <laughs> I keep saying, let's get together. Yeah. And nobody calls. Nobody calls. <laughs> I would like to give this board uh, your credit, your flowers while you guys are still here. Uh, as a new member, even though I'm an alternate member, uh, as someone who works, you know, in the arts and with artists, active artists, um, just being around this board, I have recognized opportunities that you guys have helped create and helped create for other artists. So um, the, the recognition and the things that this board has done in just a short period of time has been great. And I just want to uh, congratulate everyone that's here on the hard work that you all have done, you know, in, in bringing attention to the arts and, and the things that you guys do going forward, you know, so just like I said, just stay encouraged, because it, it really, as an artist, um, there are so many opportunities that I didn't know existed, but because this board exists, those artists um, will know now, and like I said, everyone is doing a great job, so, you know, I think that as we go forward, making our mark, you know, and everyone being special at what we do, 
we would definitely identify artists that could, you know, come up with those great creative ideas to bring in, you know, a lot of uh, grand opportunities and opportunities that we will, you know, receive because of those creative ideas. So just thank you everyone for just doing the hard work that you've been doing. Thank you. But we can do more. Of course you can. <laughs> lash, lash. Here's my whip. <laughs> um, I have made a couple of adjustments to the artist conference, which is not shown here. Um, one of the things we had discussed last time was really giving everybody an opportunity to network. And so I was thinking of incorporating some kind of like icebreaker type of thing at the beginning. And so the times that you see here would shift just a little bit, but the first couple of things are confirmed. And then just as you've seen uh, before, you know, that we start having uh, things highlighted in yellow. So I've reached out, for example, to Santa Fe and they keep committing to doing a table. And it's like, well, no, I'm asking if you would do a session like, and, you know, uh, tell people about what it is that your program is and give them a chance to ask questions. And so that's still on hold because uh, he keeps asking about tabling and it's like, no, that's not what I was asking. Um, the TikTok is confirmed. However, I don't have like a little sentence or whatever. I'm hoping to get an afternoon break sponsor. And then hopefully I will get in contact with that attorney and they will say yes. And then uh, we had some ideas too from the uh, from the last meeting that I had incorporated into the new draft. So there was maybe a UF uh, group. I, I just, I can't even remember, but I did plug them in. I just uploaded an old version to your packet. So I'm sorry about that. Gina, um, how, mu how, how much you, how much is the afternoon break? $150. All right. Oh, David, you a big spender. I work for the city of High Springs. I get paid in bags of feed. Oh, I did reach out to Harley O'Neill. Now you may recognize that name because she had just sent an, or asked me to share with everybody an email about artists talking marketing while crafting. And so I also did reach out to her to provide a session and she seemed you know, genuinely interested in doing something. So she was gonna reach out to her group and see what they might do. So that's a verified lead. Okay. Do you know? And may, maybe. If, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, is there anything you need from us at this point? Any way we can be helping? Or. Um, I think the only thing I can think of is if you if you know of somebody who would be interested in a session, because I'm just concerned about how to protect your artwork. Then I would have a a hole. You know, if the attorney and I just never get connected, and you know, I don't know how long to kind of keep reaching out. And then also with the Santa Fe, I may have another hole. Um, what about maybe also reaching, I don't know, um, an agency that, that do bookkeeping and accounting for a nonprofit organization okay. or artists that, you know, how do we pay our taxes or how do we do those things or how do we keep books how we keep records how do we pay ourselves i, I don't know that's just a suggestion so yeah. maybe there are some uh accounting i'll check back in my records i think and i'll forward the person to you and see if they that sounds great yep <laughs> Um, what if, uh, what if we put out a call for, you know, how a lot of conferences will do like a call for proposals. Um, I know a lot of people who might would want to present at this, but, um, but it might be nice to have like a little flyer or something I could send them or a link to a Google form or something where they could write up a little proposal and we could look at it, the proposals we receive and decide who might fit in some of those empty slots. That's a great idea. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Look at Chelsea. Chelsea pulling out the big bomb this late in the day. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do that. That's easy squeezy. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All righty. Next is up the prosperity study. 
All right. So um, Visit Gainesville has an annual grant program. And during that, um, whenever we all had to reveal our, our scores, Jessica had mentioned to the groups the uh, study and the need for surveys. And I don't know if you remember, but she had actually at our Meet, maybe last meeting, the meeting before, she had said, you know, this group maybe asked them for like to do 20 or 30 surveys and that group may be 50, depending on their size, you know, the number of uh, participants that they have coming to their event. Everybody was very positive about that. And some of them, you know, she was like, oh, you know, if you could even just get 20 surveys, it's like, shoot, put us down for 30, you know, so they, they seemed really gung-ho and um, I think that the surveys are really going to start rolling in, especially this time of year. It's whenever things start happening you know it was so hot in the summer but now we've got all kinds of outdoor things and theater and just I, I think now the surveys are really going to start coming in Very good. all righty next call to artist updates all right, so we have a lot going on. Um, the West Lawn sculpture I had sent to you maybe last week, the uh, current progress of the Sankofa. So that's underway. And if you haven't already marked your calendars, please make sure to do so for Juneteenth at 10 a.m. That's when we plan to have the unveiling ceremony here on the West Lawn. Uh, the Sports Event Center mural. The Sports Event Center, if you've not been by recently, it's really coming together. They're actually even uh, planning a track dedication ceremony in very early January. And so the artist, he's supposed to be on site uh, the end of this month, early next month to do the lion's share of the mural. And uh, I, yeah. yes. Okay, back to the West Lawn. Yeah. What does Stan Kofa have to do with Juneteenth? That they want, so the family wanted to unveil it at a time that, uh, so maybe for Black History Month, maybe Juneteenth, maybe Dr. Patricia Hilliard Nunn's birthday. And so in talking with the artist, he just felt like we would not be ready for February. So Juneteenth. And the family seems, you know, pleased with that. But Juneteenth is something much bigger than Sankofa. And I agree with that, but the county doesn't normally have, you know, uh, any type of celebrations or anything like that. Juneteenth, they do have celebrations in uh, Latchville County, City of Gainesville. Different organizations have done Juneteenth almost every year. So um, are you thinking that it might be a conflict, like uh, having the unveiling? Yeah, because one doesn't come to both. One, one doesn't go with the other. Like one of these things don't just be like the other. One of these things it just don't belong. Yeah. Because <laughs> see, you gotta understand what Juneteenth is, okay? And and then you're you're bringing Sankofa that has really no technical meaning to. Um, I think it's more of Dr. Patricia Hilliard Nunn, though, that she was a professor at UF and that she did the African right. studies. Okay, and... hold, hold up, hold up. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That, that has nothing to do with Juneteenth. If you, if you look at the history of Juneteenth and then what you're, who the per then you're trying to uh, put an individual celebration to it, it kind of makes a conflict. I mean, the two just don't go together. But I mean, that's just my opinion as a historian. In my opinion, because we don't have the culture rich to really appreciate the separation that having it together really will help uh, enrich what we're trying to do to even enlighten people of Juneteenth and Sankofa. Because honestly, culturally, uh, this area needs to be educated on both. And I see that as a perfect time to start education uh, because really Sankofa, Juneteenth, in our community, some people have the information, but it's being lost. And I think Sankofa reaching back to the elders to teach the youth is exactly what's needed because not a lot of people know about Juneteenth. Juneteenth wasn't celebrated by all of America until recently after COVID. So doing these things, is enlightening the public on all of our issues. And in this area, unfortunately, we have to have these things together because it's only one Black History Month instead of every, his, every month. 
So I just think because these things are new, we have to do it. We have to accept that it's not perfect, but it is being done. It is being acknowledged. And to have people know about Sankofa, I'm very excited because not a, pe not a lot of people know about Sankofa and even what it means. And Dr. But Hill, that's it. Huh? That's just what I'm talking about. Right. So we have to start. I'm talking. Wait. There. And I believe Mr. starting at this point, if I could finish starting at this point, even though it's not perfect, it's at least starting somewhere. And we can't say, let's go ahead and do this next year or next month. We just have to bite the bullet and start and then have someone separately do Sankofa celebrations and Sankofa knowledge, someone separately do Juneteenth and go from there. But we don't have a specialist that does those things. So we have to kind of like, give a brief knowledge of everything at once so okay but that's not that's not time, that's right? not true that's not true you do I have mean, people opinions, like i said my opinion that was my opinion okay but, but i'm opinion, saying just opinions I, I want to say something on your on something you said you do have people that are that have expertise and both in both number one sankofa is was is an art. It's just art. There's nothing historical I about it. I disagree. Okay, but I'm I'm telling you from in uh, a point of a point uh, of opinion. And and, the, and it's no, it's not an opinion. I'm a practitioner. Right, with an opinion. I'm a West African practitioner, and I and the Federation of West Africa had you know. I'm I'm recognizing five countries, okay? And I'm telling you what the historicals behind Sankofa. And there are people here that do teach and um develop, have developed um Juneteenth celebrations. Uh, and they've been doing that since what 2003. That's how long I've been here. Commission and I participated in Juneteenth. Um, Chelsea, is the city of Gainesville going to have anything are you aware of on Juneteenth? Yeah, I think that um, at least last year, uh, this past June, there was a tradition of the journey to Juneteenth where they have several different events kind of leading up to it. Um, and I, I think that that was going to be an annual tradition. So I, I don't know what the specific events are going to be, but um, I think there will be kind of like a, a week or two leading up to Juneteenth of celebrations of African American history and that sort of thing. Gina, did we choose the time frame or did the family? So the family had suggested uh, Black History Month, Juneteenth, or Dr. Patricia Hilliard Nunn's birthday, which I'm not sure when that is and that the artist thought uh, Black History Month was probably just a little too quick. I don't know if you read his email, but he's without a studio right this second. And so he's trying to get himself organized. And anyway, so he thought we could definitely hit Juneteenth. So I don't know if I answered your question, but the family had proposed three different like thoughts. And the artist thought that he could, you know, realistically have everything done and complete and installed by Juneteenth. Okay. Um, next up, we have the Sports Event Center sculpture that's supposed to be complete by the summer of 23. The uh, silhouette should be done by the end of this calendar year. Um, and then I had already mentioned earlier that uh, court services were getting a new multi-million dollar building. And so if you remember from the ordinance, our art budget is 1% not to exceed $100,000. And so that one would be $100,000. Uh, the department is interested in stained glass and a mural. And um, we have two new fire stations and that they're thinking of a bronze statue at both of those fire station locations. So what I'm thinking is I can draft up the uh, draft call to artists and maybe we could review those at our December meeting. Sounds good to me. Gina, go back and say the 1% not to exceed the, the is based on the cost of the building? Correct. Right. So um, 
Yeah, we have uh, in the arts ordinance. And so it's supposed to be uh, 1%, not to exceed 100,000. So for example, both of the fire station projects, it's $70,000 for each of them. Do you so have any idea the, do you have any idea the size they're looking for? Um, no, we're probably just gonna include the budget and see, you know, that's a pretty substantial budget. Um, I don't know if you remember Lady Justice over by the public defender's office, she was 40,000. And she's probably a little taller than me. So I would say she's probably six or seven feet altogether. And then she's got her um, arms out extended. And then the Sankofa, that one's going to be about 10 feet, somewhere like eight to 10 feet, somewhere in there. And that one's a $75,000 sculpture. So somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight to 10 feet would be just my rough, you know, based on our past experience. All right. All righty, if nothing else, next is public comment. Anybody online? It's all um, members, so no no members of the public. Well, I would like to make an announcement. Sure. Um, since uh, Senator uh, Janet Cruz said there was 3,000 uh, African-American abandoned cemeteries in the state of Florida, um, there's an organization called Angel investment LLC that has gotten money from the state of Florida to look at three of the um, cemeteries in Hillburg, was it Hillburg County, uh, Tampa there. Um, they like how I did the book for Alachua County. So they have hired me to go down and take some pictures of the cemeteries there. Neat. So, Congratulations. Yes. Uh, one is in Clearwater, which I don't know how that's going to be done because the city of Clearwater Public Service building is sitting on top of 328 uh, bodies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, they they did some type, what you call like uh, x-ray and um, there's 328 bodies underneath that building. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I will be doing that during Thanksgiving. So I'm really happy about that, you know, because now it seems like more and more people, more and more cemeteries are popping up. And Lachu County now has 51 cemeteries instead of six. Wow. I know. Because this project started out with six in Alachua County, then it was 10 in Alachua County, and total now is 50 some in Alachua County. Right. Congratulations. That's a lot going from six to 51. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully no more shows up <laughs> in Alachua County. Yeah. But that's it for me. I have a I have a community announcement as well. Um, so uh, you'll probably know that now uh, since March I've been working for the city of Gainesville Department of uh, Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, and um, a big part of my job is organizing the annual downtown festival and art show. Um, so thank God it's almost it's almost over. It's coming. <laughs> it's gonna, um, it's uh, happening uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend, November 19th and 20th. So the streets of downtown Gainesville will be shut down. Um, there'll be over 200 artists coming from all over the country, even at least one from out of the country. Um, there's going to be 50 plus performers. Um, five stages, interactive kid art activities, a live mural being painted by Rainier Gamboa, who's a um, Cuban-American artist from Miami. Um, there's gonna be uh, an emerging artist program that we launched this year with uh, three emerging artists displaying their work. There's gonna be a youth artist courtyard with nine um, young artists displaying and selling their work. Um, all kinds of stuff, it's gonna be awesome. So I hope you all come downtown and also, 
it would mean a lot to me if you would share it on Facebook and whatever social media you use to just get the word out there. It's really um, a multicultural celebration of, of our whole city and everything um, everything about art from culinary arts to dance to music to sculpture and painting and textile. There's something for everybody. So I hope, I hope you all come down and please share it widely to get people to come, come and visit and buy some art. Okay. Uh, I will do a quick announcement too, uh, since you all are doing this. Uh, this Wednesday we have celebration of new mural right downtown uh, where the Crane Ramen is, but you'll see the mural from far. They're going to have a band or someone who will cover bodily music or at least some tunes. So it's this Wednesday from five to seven. Okay. Oh, the mural looks really too. good. Thanks. Uh, guys, uh, I have a, uh, a poetry reading book event at the Cotton Club in Gainesville, November 26th from 3 to 8 p.m. Uh, kind of exciting. But, uh, that's all I have. Very good. It's pretty cool. You guys have got a lot going on. This is really, really crazy. Uh, a very active <laughs> squad. Like, I, I love this team. Everybody's doing stuff. Involved. We rock. Alrighty, if nothing else, we adjourn at 601. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Gobble, Happy gobble. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.